In this video, we are going to talk about 6 insights from Fourier's law of heat conduction. So without further ado, number 1. The statement of Fourier's law tells us Q equals K delta T over L, where the symbols have these meanings. And if you know this, then the question we can ask is how can we increase heat transfer? And Fourier's law actually tells us if you increase the temperature difference between the ends of a or the sides of a plane wall, then you can increase the heat transfer rate because that directly comes from the formula. Again, if you use a thermally conductive material, then your K value or thermal conductivity value would be higher and again heat transfer would increase. Similarly, if you increase a bigger area or a bigger cross sectional area, that's also going to increase the heat transfer rate. Similarly, if you uh, use a thinner wall, then that's also going to increase your heat transfer rate. Number two, Fourier's law is applicable only for steady state problems, for problems where temperature does not vary with time. Because if temperature does vary with time, then the delta T value would not be constant over time. So for this law to be applicable, the temperature gradient with respect to time has to be zero. Number three, Fourier's law is usable in all three Cartesian coordinate directions. So essentially, we can use it to calculate heat transfer in any direction. So imagine you have a plane wall whose length, height and width are given by delta x, delta y, delta z and we use a coordinate system which is shown by red and we are placing it close to this wall and now we want to find out what's the heat transfer rate in the x direction which is called qx and in the y direction which is called qy and in the z direction marked by green is called qz so now qx would be k times the cross-sectional area which is marked by red it's delta z times delta y because it's a rectangle and then we have to write the temperature difference between the two sides which are marked by red arrow and for example it assume it to be delta t then you can divide it by the distance delta x which is the thickness in the x direction similarly we can write in the y direction qi equal to k times delta x times delta z which shows us the cross-sectional area marked by blue and again let's assume the temperature difference is given by delta t so it's similar or the same as in the x direction the temperature difference and also it's the same in the y direction for example then we are going to use the same temperature difference for both cases the same formula and we are showing the area marked by green which is delta x times delta y because it's another rectangle and then we are going to write the temperature difference which is again for simplicity we have assumed the same delta t and now we are going to use the distance in the z direction or the thickness in the z direction which is delta z so there is a problem in some cases or in most real cases the delta t in every direction will not be the same so we will have to use a subscript to distinguish between the different temperature differences in the different direction so you have to use delta t x delta t y and delta t z number four you can express Fourier's law using calculus to solve complex thermal problems. So imagine you have the same plane wall and for better understanding we are going to ignore one dimension and make it a 2D problem. And then we are going to use a 2D coordinate x and y for better understanding the problem. And now we are going to mark the ends of the wall in the x direction then you get the coordinates x1 and x2 and we can write delta x equal to x2 minus x1 and we know the temperature at the side which is located at x1 is t1 and for example which is the side which is located at x2 has a temperature of t2 then we similarly write the temperature difference delta t equal to t2 minus t1 and this comes from calculus where you always subtract final value uh, minus initial value to get your temperature difference or for any difference so now we are going to find out what's qx and qx would be again k times a times the temperature difference but the question is what is the temperature difference is it t1 minus t2 or is it t2 minus t1 so notice that we are showing the 
direction of heat transfer to the right and that means T1 has to be greater than T2 because heat always flows from a higher temperature to a lower temperature and in order to in order for that to be true T1 has to be greater than T2 so we write that difference and we previously write uh, we previously wrote the temperature difference delta T to be T2 minus T1 and the distance difference or the thickness to be X2 minus X1 because from the coordinate system we can clearly see that X2 is greater than X1 so we put all these values then we are going to write it in the form of delta T over delta X but before that we have to take out the minus sign out of and put it in a form with T2 minus T1 and now after a bit of calculation we are going to find that Qx is equal to minus Ka delta T over delta X now in order to use calculus we have to make an assumption that if delta x tends to zero that means if the thickness of the wall is very small it is so small that it is smaller than any number that you can think of which means that we are going to gradually decrease the thickness of this wall and i'm drawing it with green arrow and you can see that if you make delta x progressively small ultimately it's going to become a simple slice which is marked by a red arrow like a very thin slice so that means when delta x becomes very small essentially this whole, whole wall is going to become a very thin slice and again for better understanding i'm just showing the distance and making it progressively smaller and smaller and ultimately you can see yes it reduces to a point and if you visualize it in 3d then it's going to become a slice so if that becomes the case that means we can write qx equal to minus k partial t over partial x and where this partial sign means it is a very small difference and that means now we are using calculus to represent Fourier's law and you can use this form of Fourier's law to solve many problems and also to derive the heat conduction equation for other directions we can similarly write qy equal to minus k a partial t for partial y and so on for the z direction for these two equations to be true we also assumed that the cross-sectional area and the thermal conductivity does not vary number five we use Fourier's law to define the total heat flux vector q the vector sign on top of it so heat flux means the heat transfer rate over area so the amount of heat transfer per unit area is called heat flux so again we take the plane wall and mark the various heat transfer rates in the three coordinate directions qx qy qz we put a dot sign over them to, to uh, use our symbols and keep our notations consistent then we can write the heat flux which is indicated by two prime signs and we get these formulas for the three directions and the way Fourier's law helps us is it gives us the value of Q dot. So if you can get the value of Q dot X, then you can calculate all the heat fluxes and ultimately the heat flux vector, which would be given by Q dot double prime over a vector sign equal to Q X dot double prime times the unit vector in that direction, which is I. And for the y direction, you'll have q dot double prime z. The subscript is missing for y and z direction in the video, but in the next line, this is corrected. So ultimately, the heat flux vector is given by this formula, which is marked by green. And here, you can get the value of q dot x with Fourier's law. So number six, Fourier's law gives us the direction of heat transfer. So for many problems we know how temperature varies with the distance so for example for a 1d problem we often know how t varies with x and if you want to find out what is the direction of heat transfer at a particular distance say for example marked by the red dot here we want to know does the heat transfer uh, heat is transferred towards the right or towards the left so all we have to do is we have to draw a slope there at that point and we're drawing that slope and now we're going to calculate if partial t partial x is greater than zero 
and from the expression of Fourier's law we know that this value of q dot is negative so heat must be going to the left similarly to the problem shown in the right hand side from that graph we again draw the slope and find out the slope to be negative so this means heat must be transferring to the right because the value of q dot is positive in this case so this is how Fourier's law gives us the direction of heat transfer so if you enjoyed this video please like it share it and subscribe it thank you